안녕하세요 고춧가루TV입니다. 온돌은 열기가 방바닥을 지나게 해서 방 전체를 데우는 한국 전통의 난방 방식입니다. 방바닥에 깔린 돌은 구운 돌이라는 뜻의 구들이라고도 합니다. 온돌은 아궁이에서 불을 떼면 불기운이 안으로 들어가서 방 밑을 지나 집안의 방바닥 전체의 온도를 높여주고 마지막 식은 열기가 굴뚝으로 빠져나가는 구조를 가지고 있습니다. 또한 차가운 공기는 아래로 내려가고 뜨거운 공기는 위로 올라가는 대류 현상을 이용해 방바닥 뿐만 아니라 집안 전체를 따뜻하게 만들어줍니다. 이처럼 온돌은 열의 전도와 복사 그리고 대류 원리를 모두 이용한 과학적인 난방 방법입니다. 온돌은 서양의 난로처럼 방 안에 불을 피우지 않기 때문에 탄소가 부족해지지도 연기가 나지도 않습니다. 과학적인 온돌의 우수성에 대해 IRC 부사장과 왕립아시아학회 이사를 역임한 피터 바돌르뮤씨가 온돌과 한옥에 대한 강연을 진행하였습니다. 그는 한국의 한옥에 직접 살며 한옥과 온돌의 가치와 소중함을 세계에 알리는데 애를 쓰고 있는 인물 중 하나입니다. 그러면 과연 피터 바돌르뮤씨는 한옥과 온돌에 대해 어떻게 설명했을까요? The main purpose of this lecture is not limited only to 한옥. It's limited to the whole broad spectrum of Korean architecture. One of the major aspects of traditional culture in Korea is how little known it is worldwide. Indeed, the, one of the tragedies in addition to architecture is the extent to which the understanding of Korean traditional culture, indeed, while you're living here in Korea and you look around, there's almost nothing left, is there? When you go to Europe, everywhere you walk, everywhere you drive, ride in a car, you see the history, you see the architecture, and it speaks to you, doesn't it? Of that period, of that era, of its function, a fortress, a house, a castle, schloss, whatever. In Korea, there's no reminder. There are only these tiny little morsels of palace here or some temples there. Here's a typical Korean building. This is really a Hanok scale. So what have we got? We have clay insulation in the floor and in the roof. We have a floor that is heated totally wall to wall by a fire that heats stones. The roof is designed such that the eaves send the rain outside of the granite platform on which it's built. And that's the important part as well. All of the Korean traditional buildings are built on a platform to lift it off the ground, get more air through it, get it away from the moisture of the soil below it. And of course, very important, you have to allow for the firebox, fireplace if you will, and this whole heating system, this entire area here, the foundation, is one big furnace. The whole damn thing is a furnace, which is uh, quite remarkable. So the rain falls off the roof outside, and what happens then? It splatters, but it'll never splatter on the wood. So no matter how much the rain falls, the wood and the doors never get hit. It's such that in summer, it's cool, i.e. it's sharp angle down, so very little sun comes in, and in the winter, maximum sun comes in. Most importantly, and nobody believes it, until you go to a traditional house when it's pouring rain with a heavy wind, and you'll be shocked. Rain never hits the walls of the house. It's, it's amazing. No rain ever hits these doors. No wind ever hits the doors. I was sitting in my Hanok here in Seoul, about four years ago, and a typhoon came offshore Incheon. And I was really scared, so I rushed home in my car because it was blowing like mad, and I sat right here in this place with my feet outside on the steps and sitting just inside. And I watched as signboards were flying by and parts of trees are flying by. It's terrible. Don't give me too much trouble, I smoke. <laughs> and so I lit a cigarette, and the smoke just went straight up. And outside, it's, it's, it, you know, it's a typhoon, my God. And that was absolute proof. Worse yet, the smoke went up and went out because of the suction that I just described. 
So that, that to me was proof positive of this particular science. The, probably the single most creative scientific part is the ondo. Literally, it translates as hot stone heating system. No other culture in the world has applied a heat retention and slowly releasing system to the entire floor. Many There are several cultures. People say, ah, oh, the baths of Caracalla in Rome. Right. In the bathhouse. And only in the bathhouse. And most of them are not in the floor, they're in the walls. There are some, they put some heat under it, but it wasn't a daily for every single room in the house except only the one parquet floor room. Just to show you really quickly, you have, this is the surface of the floor, which is covered actually by a very thick paper which is lacquered or oiled. Under that is a layer of clay. Under that are very thick, very broad stones. Under that is, are these flues, which are shaped like this. There are maybe five or six of these flues. And this is where you light the fire. The fire comes in and heats this huge mass of stone and clay. But look how it's designed. First it comes in and it's very broad because the fire is the hottest here. And that's to make sure that there's an, even a double stone so that it's not too hot. The purpose being to have even heat not hot in one place and cold in the other. And it works. They've had about 2,500 years to develop it and they've got it down right now. If you look here, you have the fire coming and it vectors and drops soot, vectors again, and again is slow down to allow the heat to go and then crunches up to speed it up and then out the flue. If you climb up on the roof and feel the smoke, it's cold smoke. <coughs> Virtually 100% of all the heat is absorbed into the floor. If you light five small pieces of wood, maybe this big around, no, this big around, it holds the heat with no additional fire, you just fire it once a day, for 25, 30 hours. So it's an incredibly efficient form of, of heating. It's well developed for different architecture, so you have the, the fireplace here, 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 and it depends where you can put the fireplace, where you can put the chimney. So they developed all these sophisticated flow patterns to permit different architectural changes uh, because of the building's placements. Here are two friends of mine, probably about 120 years ago, just before I came to Korea, building an, an ondol in a small room in a monumental building, like a palace. This central portion here is wooden floor, and these are heated floor. But the fire goes through the entire building very deep, with incredible absorption of heat, huge mass. Sometimes there are two or even three fireplaces to heat the major palace thing. This has been going on well over 2,000 years. This is just one example that I found for this lecture. This is Pare Kingdom, so it was sometime 698 to 982 AD, the remains of floor system. So it was all Hanok until the government started, the city government started it, and this says we are now having a demolition uh, so the, um, of this for redevelopment and building apartments. So that was the Hanok I just showed you with the flowers. Going, going, gone, finished. But there's hope for the future. There is a growing awareness. The government, city government has made a fund for uh, supporting people who have Hanok. The general public awareness has risen. People want to live in a Hanok now. My God, what's going on? And, and they're doing it nicely and doing it well.